Welcome everyone. I'm Ben Frisch uh, with the South Georgia Bay and Gray County Digital Service Squad. And today we're giving a webinar just about all things Digital Main Street and your local Digital Service Squad. Um, I recognize some of your names, so perhaps a bit of a brief refresher on uh, the different programs and some of the updates that have happened over the last year or so. And um, yeah, just covering everything that we offer and that is available to you as a business owner through Digital Main Street, um, and especially for um, Gray County, who uh, those businesses might be uh, new to our squad. Um, so happy to, uh, excited to introduce ourselves and uh, tell you more about these programs and awesome services that are available to you for free. So uh, let's get into it. We'll go over um, everything that we're talking about today. So uh, it's going to just cover an overview of Digital Main Street, um, where it started, what are the programs that are available. Um, we're going to talk about an overview of us, the Digital Service Squad, and what we provide, as well as um, the different programs through Digital Main Street. So the shop here, um, along with details about that, and then uh, the $2,500 Digital Transformation Grant, along with the $2,400 Canadian Digital Adoption Program, also known as CDAP. And um, uh, we've also, uh, we've got a hand raised. So um, uh, Sam, if you wanna pop, pop your questions in the Q&A, um, that would be the best place um, to put your questions and we'll try to answer them as we go along. Um, And so, yeah, first question off the top um, is, uh, is, do you have to be a brick and mortar? Um, not for all of these services and programs. So um, for the grants, yes, um, not necessarily for shop here or the digital service squad. So we'll cover off more detail about that um, as we go. And hopefully that answers the question <laughs> um, a little bit. So. Um, I'm going to hand off to um, Amy to talk about what is Digital Main Street um, and the Digital Service Squad. Take it away. Great. Thanks, Ben. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Amy, and uh, I'm part of the Digital Service Squad. Um, this is my first webinar, so if I speak too fast or <laughs> go over things too quickly, um, it's just because a little bit of nerves. But, um, but yeah, I'm happy to be here, and thanks for letting me be a part of this. Um, so what is Digital Main Street? Uh, basically, it's a program Ontario-wide uh, for small businesses. It's uh, devoted to helping businesses, owners uh, improve their online presence. And as it says here, it's launched in 2018. We're now in our fourth round of grants. So basically, um, the grant started again on January the 16th, which was last Monday. Uh, so you, can, you are open to apply for the grant programs. Um, and this, of course, is comprised of grants and the training program um, and regional squads. So that's us, DMS squad. That's uh, your digital service squad. Um, we're here. We're a free service to you. Um, we can help you out with your grant, with the grant applications. We can help you out with anything to do with social media. Uh, the Shop Here program is basically a program for people who do not have a brick and mortar business or are a small um, business. And, um, and then the DMS Ontario grants, what Ben's going to talk about, which is the CDAP grant, as well as the transformation grant. Um, yeah. So this is us. There's me and Ben. <laughs> and uh, we also have Rochelle and Karen, and we're all part of the Digital Service Squad, um, where you can set up appointments with us, free appointments or consults, I should say. Um, and you can do one-on-one -on -one support with us for half an hour or for an hour. Um, and we cover all different types of uh, services, which I'll get into the next slide. Um, so there we are there, and um, we serve great, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so we serve uh, South Georgian Bay, which of course includes everything from Meaford to Seg Beach, Cremor, Stainer, uh, Clearview, which is all those I just mentioned. Um, and there's the information there to get a hold of the Small Business Center uh, and the web um, website there as well. Um, and I'll point out to you, yeah, in, in South Georgian Bay, we are managed by the um, Small Business Enterprise Center. That's who um, who applied for the grant that was uh, um, 
that has put us in place in that region. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah, and then we have Gray County as well. So we're helping out um, as well with Gray County. Um, and of course, Gray County includes Own Sound and the areas around that Hanover or Durham. Um, so yeah, we are welcomed, like everybody is welcome and we'll try to help anybody that we can, of course. Um, and here's the information for the Gray County uh, Business Enterprise Center and of course the website as well for that. Sorry, that link actually I meant to put uh, is a digital service squad. We do have a digital service squad um, <laughs> uh, page available at madeingray.ca as well. Similarly to uh, the Enterprise Center that has just more information about us and our booking calendar. Mm -hmm. Great. So how can we help? These are the areas that we can help at. Basically, once you uh, go on to our console, like where uh, appointments are available, you have all, these are the options that you have to choose from, um, which we can help you with. And all of us have different, um, we can help you, different people can help you with different things. And if we don't have the answers, of course, we can help you. We will find out what it is. Uh, but basically, it's branding and content, um, you know, including your 360 degree photos uh, of your brick and mortar businesses. And um, we have advertising and analytics. Um, we have website and SEO, and we also have social media. So those are the topics that we can cover. And, um, and yeah, we're here to help. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as a concrete example, I think um, a lot of businesses lately, we've been helping um, with, uh, you know, navigating um, advertising platforms such as Google, um, Google ads or Facebook advertising, Instagram ads. Um, those kinds of things. Um, we've noticed uh, a lot of businesses eager to explore those opportunities, and uh, we have a ton of experience in in using those platforms. So uh, that's one area where we're doing a lot of work: um, SEO, search engine optimization. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, of work educating business owners on how can we improve SEO. What are some strategies that we can use to um, to start ranking more? Um, and then, um, even just, uh, I like to say getting your digital ducks in a row. So like, um, Facebook is a great example where you can own multiple pages and in Instagram accounts and have multiple admins on things. And, um, and, uh, and that can get really disorganized really quickly in terms of the back end and ownership and, and how it's all organized. So. Um, lately, we've, we've been helping a lot of business owners to um, kind of put all those pieces together and uh, make sense of it, learn how to use uh, business suite. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a really good concrete example of some of the ways that we've, we've been helping businesses lately. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so uh, just a couple of questions here real quick. Um, uh, Santiago is asking, will you share the presentation after the webinar? Yes. Um, we'll have a recording. That's why we're recording it, just so we can um, share it on our, um, share the video on our social media um, YouTube channels. And then um, we will mail out the PDF version of this presentation as well to the participants. Um, and then Hope is asking, um, if I have a brick and mortar um, and can't get the digital transformation grant because I got 3.0, um, that is correct. That, that is a, um, an eligibility factor uh, that we'll talk about um, when we get to the grants as well. But is there anything else available for me to apply for? Um, if you've already done CDAP as well, um, then uh, we can, you know, we can certainly help with other areas. Um, essentially, through Digital Main Street, there's just the two grants um, and the Shop Here program that we would recommend. Um, and then, okay, last question real quick. Do you help with logo design for small businesses? Um, not necessarily, um, we don't design logos for businesses, but we can, um, we can help, uh, talk about the strategy and, um, you know, the grant is a great reason or, or, you know, let's say you wanted to get a new logo and you could apply for the grant. Um, that would be a good way to spend that money, hiring a graphic designer, um, and we can certainly uh, help in the strategy and conceptualization of that branding. Um, but 
we don't we don't necessarily do branding design for our business. Um, and then, uh, sorry, okay. Um, and then shop here is, uh, we'll, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, I think actually next slide um, or in a couple of slides, but shop here um, is not just for home-based businesses, it's for anyone. Um, and we'll give you the details in a minute. Hmm. Uh, okay, so where do we start? Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we um, we basically you would register for free at digitalmainstreet.ca. Um, if you have, it's a three kind of a three part process. But if you have any questions about it or you you need help with it, we're here to help you walk walk you through that. So that's where you would start. Um, then you can book a 30 minute consultation with us. It's basically an, an initial consultation. Um, and then we can go from there, assess the business, your business and, uh, see what is best for you and what your needs are. Um, and then develop an action planning up, um, back as often as needed. Obviously you can book as many appointments. Um, and then, yeah, I'll remember all the services are free. So yeah, we can, you can take a book a consultation, initial consultation, and then we can go from there and uh, yeah, book as many consultations if, as you'd like <laughs> or answer any questions. And can you just remind everyone too, Amy, um, what is a digital audit? Because that's pretty What is the digital audit? Sorry, I just, I can't oh, hear you. Yeah, yeah. What is, okay. yeah, just remind everyone what the digital audit is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So digital audit basically goes through your business, your website, uh, as well as your social media. And it um, outlines or it kind of asks questions as to whether where you may be missing some steps in your with your website um, or where you're where you're um, you are with your SEO. And it basically it gives you all these different measures. We go through, we, we you know, yes or no answers. Um, we do this ourselves, like here at, with your, your digital service squad. And then we go back and we would send that to you and it, um, you would look through it and we can set up an appointment, a consult to basically go over that with you and then show spots where you may be like, oh yeah, I need to, um, to work on Facebook or I need to work on my Instagram or um, and just gives you ideas as well, some 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 hints as to where we can we can help you with your business. So it's a great place to start, and then from that we can book another consult and uh, and and get you on your way. Anything you want to add with that, Ben? No. Okay. No, no, for well, Okay, so let's talk about Shop Here. So Shop Here basically um, is all about e-commerce. Um, it creates online stores uh, for independent small businesses and artists. And uh, that's basically what it's it's about. Um, and I'll show it in the next slide. So let's just talk about um, you create and launch a brand, a new e-commerce, sorry, e-commerce website through Shopify or other programs. Um, partner with e-commerce specialists who will help you design and build um, and launch your site. Uh, you get a 90 day free trial of Shopify with no obligation, includes added perks like Facebook and credits, marketing support and free.ca um, domain registration. So basically you're going to go on to shop to um, your shop here. You would sign in basically at the same place, a digital main street uh, grant. Um, we can give you that information coming down the line. Um, and once you sign up for this, go through the shop here program, then someone will notify you as I've just already outline but someone does notify you from the shop here program and they walk you through every step um yeah and i think it's important to note so um as uh hope was asking um it is available or i think we cover um, yeah it's on the next slide <laughs> yeah but um it is a different team uh from us that will build uh your shopify site um mm -hmm. sometimes that can that maybe gets a little confusing but um the, the application process for shop here is actually really simple and straightforward at digitalmainstreet.ca. Um, but here's the eligibility criteria. Right. And we're also here for like, if people do have a question or if they get confused, like if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us as well about it. So if you have any questions about the shop here program. Um, so yeah, here's your eligibility, be a registered business in Ontario have under 10 employees, and then 25 if you're a restaurant, uh, be either a business or an artist, and be either commercially located or home-based. So it's really great about, because there's a lot of home-based businesses, and people need some you know, help, you want to set up your e-commerce site, this is a great place to get started with that, especially if you're not a brick and mortar business. Um, yes, but it, brick and mortar can also take advantage oh. of that. 
uh, right, as well. <laughs> but at the same time, brick and mortar um, can take advantage of the CDAP, Canadian Digital Adoption Program, somewhat similar uh, in terms of criteria, um, but it involves a $2,400 grant. Um, so we often uh, push those eligible businesses uh, in that direction if, if, it, if it is applicable. Great. I'll pass it over to you, Ben. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks, Amy. And uh, so, yeah, I want to talk about um, the grants, the grants available. Uh, but first, actually, there's another question real quick. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So uh, the Shop Here program, we mentioned Shopify. Uh, that's usually the platform of choice, but they do work with other platforms. Um, uh, they do work with Square. I think they do work with Squarespace um as well and um but you have to double check with them uh again it's a really quick and easy form to fill out um and i think i think they do use squarespace i could be wrong but they but basically they have a, a sort of a short list of of e-commerce platforms that they're uh comfortable with that they are using um on the regular basis and so yeah you'd have to just fill in that form and see see what they can do um, so grants available. So we're going to start talking first about the digital transformation grant. So this one's been around the longest. Um, it's, uh, it's sort of where the digital main street program started. Um, and it's a, again, $2,500 grant offered through digital main street. And the, the main purpose of this is to help businesses to upgrade their online presence, adopt new technologies and improve internal operating processes. Um, things that the grant can be used for are things like launching a new website, revamping a current website, developing e-commerce site functionality, um, invest in uh, branding. So we talked about that a little bit earlier, uh, hiring, a, a, hiring a graphic designer, hiring a photographer, something like that, um, marketing consultants, um, productivity, social media software, these are all kinds of things that would be eligible expenses, including training and hardware. So up to $1,000, they say, um, and that can include things like POS systems. Um, and uh, I've even seen some hardware like a tablet that's specifically for um, using and to create and uh, post social media content. Uh, as long as you can justify it in your um, in your application, it should be approved. Um, some of the things that they don't approve for hardware are just things that just don't quite fit into your marketing plan um, as it relates to digital marketing. So um, if you wanted to put like a, a TV display up in your shop, uh, I don't know that they would really um, accept that. Um, but lots of other eligible, great eligible expenses that are available there. Um, in terms of the eligibility criteria, it is um, uh, there's quite a few kind of boxes to check there. The main ones though are uh, 18 years of old, 18 years of age or older, Canadian citizen or permanent resident, uh, living in and operating a registered or incorporated business in Ontario. So that's a big question people ask: Do I have to be incorporated? No, uh, as long as you're registered. So you've gone through that. Um, process, uh, you know, that $60, $65 process of just registering your business in Ontario, um, then that would check that box. Um, the, the second thing, the main major uh, eligibility criteria is that you have a brick and mortar uh, establishment that's currently in operation. Um, and uh, so this is a really good question here. Like, does one's home count as a brick and mortar? Um, unfortunately, no, like it has to be in a like commercially uh, zoned area. So you're, um, what they want to see because they ask for photos of signage and um, like a, a photo of the interior where you meet your clients or customers um, to show that it's a, it is primarily or like it is solely a commercial uh, building and um, and what they want to see too is that you either paying commercial property tax or commercial rent um, or show a lease. So a lot of businesses like they don't own their building. Um, if you own your building, then you probably have that 
property tax bill. Um, but if you're renting, like most businesses, then uh, just show that you have a lease in place. You're not month to month, um, and that will uh, suffice for that requirement. Um, <clears throat> Um, and then lastly, uh, have between one and 50 employees. Um, and I think I'm trying to look at some of the questions. Um, and uh, we've got another one about the timing. So let me get through these criteria and I'll come back to that timing. Um, so have you received a 3.0? Yeah, so actually this is the question that we're looking uh, for. So, so let me back up here. <laughs> To qualify for a digital transformation grant, you must not, so we're changing these to negatives, um, must not have received a 3.0 digital transformation grant. And that, I guess, also should include 4.0 um, uh, in 2022. So um, we're going back to 2021. Um, and uh, that's a, I mean, that can be a tough question sometimes, um, you know, because we use these terms 3.0 and, uh, and things like that. One of the best ways to find out, you know, if you've received the grant in the past and you're not sure if this applies to you, um, you can connect with us. We, we do have access to this information um, that we can pull up really quickly and just tell you directly um, if, if it's worth your time to apply or, um, or if you don't qualify because of that uh 3.0 grant um so yeah so if you have questions of so if you have questions about that one get in touch with us and we can just tell you um oh, right um but also so you must not be a home-based or strictly online business um you must not be supplying digital services to other businesses so um like us uh web design development um marketing consultants uh we would not qualify, obviously. Um, and it doesn't apply either to charities or not-for-profits or franchises. And that includes independently owned and operated franchises. Um, and then finally, uh, you must not be renting office space on a temporary or month-to-month -month basis. Again, having that lease in place is a really important criteria. And you must not be in a shared workspace. So a hot desk kind of situation. They want to see if that permanent office or um, uh, retail location. And then let's talk quickly about how to apply for this digital transformation grant. Um, essentially, you know, Amy talked about uh, just registering at digitalmainstreet.ca. What's gonna happen is it's gonna take you through this really quick, um, what we call the digital assessment. So it's a form, uh, asks a few questions about your um, current digital marketing presence uh, and, and activity, and it's going to spit out this, uh, this assessment, and it's going to rank you based on, you know, the answers that you've given. And, uh, and what's cool is, I mean, you can use this as a tool, anybody can, um, whether or not you're qualifying or, um, or not, but you can use this to keep track and, uh, you know, help you improve your, your digital marketing presence as you progress. So, um, once you, if you clicked on one of those, it'll open up and it'll show you what things you're missing and you can check them off as you uh, do try to improve your process. Uh, but anyway, once you're in, once you're logged in uh, and at, and finished your digital assessment, um, they don't put it in the most uh, obvious place, but right up at the top there, I've circled it and arrow pointed to it. Um, you can see grants available and we do now have both the digital transformation grant, as Amy mentioned, is back as of January 16th, um, as well as the CDAP, uh, Canadian Digital Adoption Program, which we'll talk about again in a minute. But when you click on the digital transformation grant, um, then you're gonna be brought here. And, uh, and so what's cool is, I mean, there's this nice little step-by-step uh, -step process that everyone needs to follow along um, to complete your application. Again, it starts with that digital assessment. If you've already done that, it should have a check mark when you come in here. Then there's a pre-qualification form to fill out. Um, this is not the application. A lot of people get confused by that. Um, 
it basically just asks all of those uh, qualification questions. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're answering them correctly. What they're trying to do is just, you know, um, uh, pre-qualify people so that, you know, someone doesn't get all the way to the end um, and then not, and then get disqualified because, um, you know, they, they're not in a brick and mortar establishment and then they get angry because they wasted their time, you know, and that makes sense. So what we're trying to do is just make sure that, you know, you don't waste a lot of your time. Um, they let you know ahead of time, sorry, you're not qualified um, or that yes, you do um, meet those qualifications. And so you'll fill out that form, um, you'll hit submit, and then it'll take about a day or two before um, you get an email saying, yes, uh, you qualify, you're good to go. And at that point, when you log back in, then the training videos will be available to you and you can um, get started uh, on those. The training videos, there's about two and a half to three hours of training material to go through. Um, it is a requirement, um, part of the application, um, but it's some really great content. So I highly recommend um, that you take advantage of that. You, um, you know, take notes, whatever. And, um, and a lot of people ask too, even if you are um, not qualified for the grant, you can access those training videos. So once you've finished that pre-qualification form, you will get an email saying you're not qualified but you can still access the training videos. So um, just keep that in mind. And then once you're through the training videos, then you'll be able to access the application. And um, you wanna keep in mind, there are some things that you'll need um, to have ready for that. Um, there is a digital transformation plan template that needs to be filled out um, uh, as part of that application. And then, um, there's, as I mentioned, a copy of your lease um, or your property tax bill. There is um, your, uh, your business registration document or articles of incorporation, as well as um, photos of your signage and uh, interior. So those four things are required. And um, don't worry if you forget, there is a video um, available through Obia on their YouTube channel. Um, I'm not going to watch it here. It's about a five minute video. It walks you through exactly step by step um, every part of that process as well. So um, again, we're going to send out this, this uh, PDF document to all of the registrants today. And um, so you have those links, but you can also find it searching for uh, Obia, O-B-I-A-A. How to apply, um, and yes, it does say 2022, but it um, it is still applicable in 2023 um, because it's this, this this round of grant funding is still considered 4.0. Any questions uh, about the digital transformation grant before I jump into CDAP, the Canadian Digital Adoption Program? If not, we'll get right into it. Um, so, so CDAP is a $2,400 grant that again is offered by Digital Main Street also. And uh, it is designed to help businesses adopt e-commerce capabilities and explore new revenue streams. So this one has much more of an e-commerce e uh, focus to it. And, um, and that getting that site functionality into place. So usually for businesses that haven't um, adopted e-commerce yet, this is a great option. And, um, and again, so it's kind of like shop here, but it does come along with the $2,400 grant um, as well. So if you do qualify, I'd say, you know, this is a better option. Um, they're gonna help you launch a new, uh, new website or revamp your current website. And again, this one also covers hardware up to $1,000, usually for stuff like POS, um, point of sale systems and equipment that is necessary. Um, so in terms of eligibility criteria for the CDAP grant, um, 
you must be a for-profit business, um, including for-profit social enterprise and cooperatives. Um, you must be a registered or incorporated business, again, similarly to the other one. Um, you must also be consumer-facing business. Um, that means, you know, not just online, um, or excuse me, not just um, uh, uh, doing wholesale, that kind of thing. Um, you can be uh, accessed by end use customers and provide in-person services to consumers. So businesses that are not considered consumer facing are those that focus primarily on wholesale trade or sell only to other businesses. Businesses that engage in drop shipping or online reselling are also not considered consumer facing. Um, so basically you're selling um, you know, retail uh, to consumers on your own website. Um, and that is, uh, that will get you qualified here. That's the main thing. Um, and then uh, you must be a business that has at least one employee on payroll that isn't uh, the owner or contractor, full-time, part-time, uh, but for at least three months prior to application. See, this one was a real... Um, a real problem for most businesses because most businesses don't have someone else on payroll or, you know, a lot of solopreneurs, um, but they added this, which is a big game changer and open it up to a lot more. It's, or have had at least 30,000 in annual revenue in the most recent tax year. So, um, so now it's like, we don't have to worry too much about having, um, someone else on payroll, as long as we've had at least 30,000 in annual uh, revenue in the most recent tax year, we should be qualified. So that was, like I said, a really big um, improvement on the uh, criteria that opened it up to a lot more businesses. And we're really excited to see that uh, change um, just over the last, I think it was like six months, pretty recent. Um, so eligibility continued. So to qualify for CDAP grant, you must um, commit to maintaining adopt uh, uh, maintaining digital adoption strategy for six months after participation in the program. So this one takes a little bit more hands-on um, with their approach to uh, coaching you through the process of a digital adoption, um, which is kind of cool. So uh, there's a little bit more hands-on um, and, and a commitment to making those changes. Um, you must consent to participating in follow-up surveys, sharing information with the government of Canada um, and statistics, uh, ISED and Statistics Canada, and having the name of the business published as a recipient of funding. Um, the following types of small businesses are ineligible. Those are uh, similarly corporate chains, franchises, registered charities, representatives of multi-level marketing companies, a brokerage firm, and their agents. So. Um, for example, real estate, investment, insurance, businesses that engage in online reselling or drop shipping, again, not, um, not qualified, or wholesale distribution businesses and manufacturers, um, unless their business model includes direct sales to the end consumer. Hopefully that all makes sense. <laughs> it can be tricky. Um, but again, uh, same place, just to recap, um, same approach. You're going to log in, create a, a login at digitalmainstreet.ca. You're going to do the digital assessment, and that will give you access to the grants available. And you're going to click on CDAP. Oops. Um, and when you click on the CDAP, um, this is what you'll see. It's very similar to the digital transformation grant um, step by step process, um, but this one is. Uh, quite different in terms of what you'll find on, in those steps. So there's the eligibility program application. Um, similarly to the, the uh, digital transformation grant asks a variety of el those eligibility questions, all of them actually, um, but this one is treated more like an application. So they take that as an application. Um, then there's a process of submitting a spending plan um, and uh, putting in a more formal grant application then a grant expenditure submission, and uh, then funds distributed at the end. 
Um, and oh, so one difference, uh, a really important difference between these two grants too, I will say, is that the CDAP is a um, cost recovery grant, meaning um, you're going, they want you to spend the money first and then they will reimburse you for those uh, expenses. Whereas digital transformation grant is um, they will cut you a check and then um, have you submit your receipts and reporting after the fact. Um, so that's a really important distinction between the two. Um, and then we also have a question, um, is the 30, is the 30,000 uh, criteria tax inclusive or net of taxes? That's a really good question. I think that it is inclusive of um, tax. Like I believe it should be um, total revenue, um, but that might be a question that we can um, present to Digital Main Street um, and, and get an answer if, you are uh, really interested in applying. And so that is it. That is all of uh, all that we've got in terms of the um, different programs, all the eligibility criteria for the grants. Um, are there any questions um, about any of those? Um, I will drop our uh, our booking calendar in the in the chat. So if you do have a chance, copy that out or just click on it um, so you have it available. Um, cool, yeah. And so Matt um, is asking. Um, he lives in the area. He's recently been approved as a vendor. So Digital Main Street also has like a vendor directory for um, other. Uh, digital marketing um, companies. And um, so he's asking if there's a, a, a best way to start servicing clients in the area. Do we have a process um, for interested parties to approve vendors or for sending? Um, we don't necessarily, because um, we don't necessarily get notifications about those vendors. Um, so the best thing to do is set up a one-to-one -one with us and, um, you know, if there's uh, you know, any clients that we run into that have a need for your services, we can certainly um, put you on the list of people that we might send them um, in, uh, in the future. So hopefully that helps. Um, and um, right, so regarding CDAP, how long after you spend the money uh, would the check to reimbursement uh, reimburse the upfront investment? Um, I think it's pretty quickly. Do you have a sense of that, Amy? Um, I mean, I know that um, the digital transformation grant, the turnaround for cutting the check is like um, is like a week and a half to two weeks, depending on um, depending on applications in the system. But it, it's been really quick lately. And so um, I don't imagine that the CDAP would, would be a uh, overly uh, lengthy process. I think they'd mm. probably have it down pretty quick. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, sorry, I don't have any additional information. I'm on the site right now, but I don't see anything that says exactly how long it does take. But we can look into that. Um, oops, yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, I did just drop the um, the link there to um, the booking website in the chat. So that's the getdigitalsupport.as.me. That's right to our just our full booking calendar. Um, and you can see there's just a variety of different services. We've laid it out such that um, to kind of help people understand like just all the things that we can help with. We've laid it out in such a way that you can just select the kind of service that you're looking for. Um, you know, whether that's social media help, um, help with your website, help with search engine optimization, you can click that exact um, topic uh, for your meeting and consult. Um, I often tell people too, if you don't see the thing that you're needing help with specifically, 
uh, don't worry about it. You know, um, we can still maybe look into it for you or um, if it's something specific um, that just doesn't happen to be on that list. Um, there's, you know, you can book a general meeting and um, see what we can help you with. <laughs> Hopefully we can find a, an answer or, or help you with whatever you're having trouble with. Um, oh, here, you know what, sorry. I, yes, I, I sent it to, I didn't notice, I sent it to just the hosts, the panelists, there you go. So now in the chat to everyone is the link um, for our booking calendar. Thank you for pointing that out. Excellent. Well, if there's no more questions, um, I'd like to say thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Amy, for helping me out. Oh, you're welcome. This was a lovely pleasure oh. for a Wednesday. <laughs> um, and yeah, we look forward to um, look forward to helping you, working with you, and um, don't hesitate to reach out to the Digital Service Squad um, for any help with navigating any of these programs answering any of your questions about them or just general help with your digital marketing. That's what we're here for. And it's completely free, um, which is pretty amazing. Plus we also have webinar webinars coming up weekly every yep. Wednesday starting today. So next week we also have another one. It's going to be reviewing the same um, information um, for people who are not able to join today. And then going forward, we'll be speaking about everything from websites to analytics to SEO yeah, all topics covered. Thank you. Yes, that's a great point. Uh, definitely register for those other webinars. Um, we're going to be doing um, uh, website best practices. So making sure that you're getting the most out of your website. We're covering that off um, uh, in the next one after uh, in two weeks. And then following that, GA4 is a really important one. Google Analytics 4. Uh, I'm excited for that one. Um, because it is, uh, it's a steep learning curve. It's quite a different platform, but it's something that uh, everyone needs to know about and, and connect because old analytics, Google uh, Universal Analytics is going away as of um, July of this year. So we all need to, we all need to be uh, on that webinar. It's very important. So check our Facebook accounts um, for those uh, registration links. Um, you'll find in the event section of the Enterprise Center's uh, Facebook pages. Um, and yeah, we'd love to see you there. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you next time. Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>